Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a pipe tobacco review for you. It is this Cornell and Deal's Haunted Bookshop. I did a first smoke, first impressions video of this last week, so if you would like to look at that video and see if my initial impressions have changed from that video to this video, go ahead and check that out. But I've been going on this tin for a good week and a half now, so I think I have a pretty good idea of my opinion. So the blend is Cornell & Deal Haunted Bookshop, produced by Cornell & Deal, available at now, there are quite a few different options here. Smokingpipes.com has the two ounce tin like this for $9.78. They also have an eight ounce tin for $29.33. And then they have bulk starting at $2.87 an ounce. Pipes and Cigars um, normally has the two ounce tin for $9.77, but it is currently back ordered as of the recording of this video. They do have the eight ounce for $29.32 and the bulk is back ordered there as well, but it starts out at 311 an ounce, and then Four Noggins only has the bulk, and that is 327 an ounce, and often the pricing changes depending on how much you buy. Tin description on this baby. <clears throat> I'll read it for you now. Haunted Bookshop, another of the late Bob Ronowski's blends, named in honor of the famous novel written by Christopher Morley, a Burley and Virginia blend with just a touch of Perique. It's quite appropriate, in my opinion, that this is called Haunted Bookshop because if you think about an old bookshop or maybe an old library, if you go down to the stacks, I actually worked in the library system when I went to USC and there was the Doheny branch, um, the Doheny library that had these basement book stacks that were just acres and acres, well maybe not acres, but just a ton of very narrow book stacks that just went on forever. Um, many very, very old books, some like amazing first editions and rare books and stuff that were just kind of in there with like library stamps and things on them. Um, but if you would walk through there, the, the smell of those old musty books, this is kind of evocative of that to me. So I think it's very appropriate. The blend type is a Burley blend. It is primarily Burley and the blend contains Burley, Virginia, and Perique, as they said in the tin description. Let's get to the vital stats here. Got them right here. The flavoring in this one, I don't detect any added flavoring, and the cut is a coarse cut. It's sort of a combination. The different component tobaccos sort of have different cuts, and then they're kind of all mixed together. Let me show you that right now. Here's the tin of Cornell & Deal's Haunted Bookshop. I kind of like the tin art here. And it's actually very reminiscent of the cover of the book after which this blend is named. Haunted Bookshop by Morley, I believe. If we pop it open, you can see that it is kind of a coarse cut. There are some little ribbons in here, some maybe sort of cube cut components as well, um, but pretty dry and pretty springy, but it smokes okay. I think in the future, if I get this, I would probably just put it in a jar right away. Now look at this almost a flake there. Um, but the component tobacco is mostly burly and there's just a little bit of that dark Perique in there. Not sure if you can pick that out or not. And then a little bit of lighter Virginia as well, but fairly well packaged. Um, a good smoke, a good blend. I've been enjoying it. Excellent. Now I'm with the vital stats. The strength and taste categories on this one, I sort of had to scratch my head a little bit because in comparison to other Burley blends, and especially to Old Joe Krantz, which I have also reviewed on this channel, I'm gonna give this a medium in strength, the body, the mouthfeel, and then a medium in taste as well. For someone who is not used to Burley blends or blends that have Perique in them, they might seem a little higher than medium, but especially compared to Old Joe Krantz, this is a more mild, maybe slightly less robust blend. I'm gonna give it medium. And then also with the nicotine level, Burley blends are usually fairly lowish, at least to me, in nicotine, but this does have Perique in it, and Perique often adds a pretty big nicotine punch. So to me, this seemed like a medium blend. Some people might think this is a little higher. I'm just gonna have to give it medium. That's usually what I do when I can't quite nail it down. Um, your mileage may vary on that. And then the moisture from tin, as I mentioned, and thank you to viewers who, in my first smoke, I was talking about the tin moisture, and I was saying on my scale of moisture content, I couldn't remember what was just 
a little drier than Goldilocks and people reminded me it was day old croissant. So uh, there you go. That's what this was out of the tin. And then the packaging, as I mentioned, two ounce tin like this, and then also available in eight ounce and in bulk. So let's crack this tin open, take a whiff. I still have eh, about half the tin left. So let's take a smell here. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes, I see. Um, it's a nutty, musty, there's that must, I like it. Um, sort of chocolatey as well, kind of a finish to the aroma, and to me more of like a, a more bitter baker's chocolate. And I get a little bit of a raisiny odor from the Perique as well, not much sweetness. And it doesn't really smell like cigarettes to me. A lot of people think that Burley blends smell like cigarettes. To me, it doesn't, but that's what I get out of the tin. And then the room note, kind of pungent and musty. And again, we're gonna be mentioning this a lot. When people think of Burley blends, they often think that they taste or smell like cigarettes. I don't think that this does taste very much like cigarettes, but if someone is particularly sensitive to the smell of cigarettes, they may think that this room aroma is a bit cigarette-like. Um, it doesn't seem to linger the same way that cigarettes do, so you'll see. If, if you smoke this around a significant other or friend, family, whatever, who doesn't like the smell of cigarettes or just smoke in general, I don't think this is gonna be changing their minds. But let's get this lit up. We'll talk about the mechanics first as we usually do once I have this pipe going. Mm-hmm. All right, mechanics, great. I had no issue with this blend whatsoever, even though it came a little dry and it is a bit springy. When you're trying to tamp it, it does have a tendency to want to like spring out of your pipe like a jack-in-the-box, but if you tamp it down pretty firmly, um, takes a light well, stays lit well, burns pretty cool and dry. I had a lot of trouble and this is something I actually do when I'm reviewing a blend. I try to puff really hard and get it to get as hot and harsh as I can. You can get this to burn hot and it does taste a little more acrid maybe when you do that, but it's difficult. And if you're just going at a normal pace, hard to get it really hot, doesn't have any bite, and it leaves your pipe very dry, at least every time that I've smoked it. And it doesn't seem to ghost your pipe very easily either. So. I think it's a really well-behaved, really mechanically sound blend. But how does it taste? Hmm. Well, at first light and for the first little bit of the bowl, it does have a tendency to a bit of harshness, to a bit of maybe kind of acrid bitterness, and that might throw some people off, maybe turn them off to the blend, but if you power through that very quickly, it settles down. But I wanted to bring something up that a lot of people bring up when they talk about Burley Blends, and that is the fact that Burley Blends taste like cigarettes. Cigarettes often have a large component of Burley in them. And so I guess it's kind of natural if you have a pipe tobacco blend that has Burley tobacco in it, that people may think that it tastes like cigarettes. I maintain that if you actually were a cigarette smoker for any length of time, the difference between what a cigarette tastes like, your standard brands like a Marlboro or Camel, whatever, at least in America, compared to a nice high quality tobacco, pipe tobacco blend that has Burley in it, they don't really taste very similar. Um, I guess if I were really pressed, I could maybe pick out a few little things that sort of remind me of cigarettes, but it's really the last thing I think about when I smoke this blend. The only thing is maybe in the room note there is a slight touch of cigarettiness. But for some reason, and I don't know what it is that's added to cigarette tobacco which does this, but stale cigarette smoke tastes or smells disgusting. This does not. The room aroma does not smell, it doesn't linger and coat things in the same way that cigarette smoke does. So. Just put that out of your mind. If, if you're very sensitive to, to cigarettes, maybe you won't like this blend, but I think you should give it a try. Just Burley blends in general. I don't think they really taste like cigarettes that much. But what about the actual flavor of this now that we've gotten all that other stuff out of the way? This is musty, nutty, kind of oaty, um, if that's a word, slightly sweet, 
slightly tart. There is a little bit of kind of a, a sour edge to this as well, even though there's kind of a bitter edge too. It's sort of interesting. Earthy, dark, a little bit of woodsiness. Um, a perfect amount of Perique, in my opinion, even though I'm someone who really does enjoy a pretty healthy dash of Perique in my blends, if they contain Perique. I think this is a pretty perfect amount because it doesn't overpower. Comparing it to Old Joe Krantz, it has more Perique, at least in my opinion. Um, that may be a little hair too much in a burly blend, especially if you want it to be an all day smoke. I think this has the perfect amount of Perique. It just adds a little bit of spice, not too much. It's funny because it actually reminds me of um, like a bowl of muesli, if you've ever had that. It's like a breakfast cereal thing. Um, all sorts of different brands. I don't think muesli is actually a trademark. I think it's just sort of what it is, but it's like oats, rolled oats and nuts and fruits, like often uh, parts of raisins and maybe figs or things like that. Um, it kind of reminds me of muesli in an interesting way. oaty, nutty, raisiny, but then there is that slightly musty quality. And when I did my first smoke, I said that there was this certain flavor and I couldn't put my finger on it, but it was there in the blend and it was sort of tantalizing my brain. I was really kind of racking my brain trying to figure out what it was. And I don't know that I've necessarily exactly put my finger on it, but the closest I could come is that there's maybe sort of a slight mushroom kind of flavor to it. And I really like mushrooms. And so maybe that's the thing that I was sort of grabbing onto or that was tickling my fancy a little bit. And there is definitely this sort of musty, earthy quality to it. So I think, I think it's mushrooms. It might be mushrooms. All told, I have been thoroughly enjoying my time with Cornell and Deal's Haunted Bookshop. To me, this is a really good medium bodied, medium flavor, to me, medium nicotine content, all day sort of smoke. And especially as the weather turns to fall, the leaves change, the air gets a bit colder. This just feels right for the season. I think it's quite tasty, quite delicious. If you were sort of on the fence about Burley blends, this may or may not be the blend for you to try because it definitely, it is a Burley blend. It's, to someone who doesn't smoke burley, it may taste strongly. To someone who is well versed in burley blends, I think this would sort of ride in that medium level in terms of flavor and body and everything. If you're also maybe sort of on the fence about Perique, I think this might be a good blend for you because it isn't overpowering in that respect, but it's really worth checking out in my opinion. If you have tried Old Joe Kranz and thought that was a bit much, it might be worth it for you to try Haunted Bookshop because it kind of ratches it down a little bit. And in my opinion, is a little more balanced and a little more well-behaved, but I have thoroughly enjoyed Haunted Bookshop by Cornell and Deal. I think you might too. You might as well check it out. Thank you so much for watching this review of Cornell and Deal's Haunted Bookshop. I've been your good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.